Hello and welcome back for another character design. To start off with, I have a couple of sketchbooks that I like to flip through on occasion and just to see if there's any ideas that really catch my eye. Sometimes I use this as a way of inspiration if I'm having a hard time deciding what I really want to draw. When I finally find one that I like and want to explore more with sketching and thumbnailing, I make a few sketches in my book and then get straight into creating the character. Like a lot of artists, I start with the head and then work my way down. When I'm drawing bodies, I tend to just draw a shape similar to the head and take out triangular notches out of the sides to represent the waist. The size of the notches change when the angle of the pose turns from left to right. This is a simple process I do just to give me the foundation to draw on that I need. Then, all I need to do is bring two lines down from the pelvis, taking note of where the knees begin, and then adjusting the whole length of the leg as much as I need to, for it to make sense in relation to the angle of her pose. Now it's time to decide what she's going to wear, and if she's holding anything. I wanted to do something in this illustration that I hadn't done before, and that turned out to me adding a pair of long johns. Perhaps a bit too simple, but I really liked the idea so I rolled with it. I decided to give her gloves and an umbrella as a weapon because I started to get some ideas of how I wanted to create a backstory for this character and what she was doing. But before I do that, I have to go around and finish off the piece by adding a few more details and cleaning up some edges. In a moment, you'll see me using my iPod to look up some photo references to help me clean up the edges on her left fist. Although her hand was the only reference photo I used in this piece, I'm always using and checking reference photos just to make sure my poses are natural and realistic looking. Using reference photos can be really fun. It's a way to explore and draw things that you haven't drawn before or just drawing things that you need more practice with. If you can't draw legs, draw two leg poses over and over until you feel comfortable drawing them. And over time, keep adding another pose to your memory until you have a whole list of legs, arms and hands you can draw easily from memory. watercolour paint, which I'm about to use on some thumbnail sketches. I don't often use thumbnail sketches, but the last two paintings I've done, I have just so I can have an idea of what colours I want to use before I jump into the illustration. To paint the red long johns, I chose cadmium red deep and Chinese white. I've always had a bit of trouble choosing colours to paint an illustration with, mostly because I never studied colour theory. I would mainly choose colours that I liked and wanted to put in the illustration rather than ones that went well together and complemented each other. For the umbrella I used dark zine purple and Prussian blue and then just a mixture of different greens to throw on the lamp above her head. The boots were just a mixture of whatever browns and yellows were on my palette at the time, like burnt sienna, burnt umber and yellow ochre.
so much for watching and I've written a little backstory for you to listen while I finish off the character and add shading. Okay, keep drawing and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye! When Sarah was little and got scared, she would always go to the side of Ian Gray, her very best friend. Whenever she felt alone, Ian was there to talk and be with her. Whenever she felt afraid, Ian took up arms against her fears and fought them through the night. When Sarah was on the verge of tears, there was Ian with a jester hat and bells to bring a smile back to her face. And when Sarah was faced with her biggest challenge of leaving her mum and dad for the first day of school, Ian held her hand and walked her to the bus, sat by her side and told her stories of fantasy worlds. When they were alone in the house, they would dress up in long johns, boots and dishwashing gloves and pretend they were knights fighting off the enemies that would dare storm their castle with their shining swords which were umbrellas. When she was older and moved out of home, she worried she would never see Ian again. He was nowhere to be seen. She called, but there was no answer. When she stepped on the landing of her new apartment, she saw a bright blue umbrella by the door. She picked up the sword and entered the room, and Ian was there leaning up against the wall. But he couldn't stay. There was a frightened little girl somewhere else in the world who needed an imaginary friend to protect her. But Ian couldn't go without having one last battle with Sarah. They fought alongside knights in the Middle Ages all night long, until he said his goodbyes and faded away. <laughs>